1 Chronicles chapter 13 David conferred with each of his officers, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. He then said to the whole assembly of Israel, If it seems good to you, and if it is the will of the Lord our God, Let us send word far and wide to the rest of our people throughout the territories of Israel, and also to the priests and Levites who are with them in their towns and pasture lands, to come and join us. Let us bring the ark of our God back to us, for we did not inquire of it during the reign of Saul. The whole assembly agreed to do this, because it seemed right to all the people. So David assembled all Israel, from the river Shihor in Egypt to Lebo Hamath, to bring the ark of God from Kiriath Jearim. David and all Israel went to Baalah of Judah, Kiriath Jearim, to bring up from there the ark of God the Lord, who is enthroned between the cherubim, the ark that is called by the name. They moved the ark of God from Abinadab's house on a new cart with Uzzah and Ahio guiding it. David and all the Israelites were celebrating with all their might before God with songs and with harps, lyres, tambourines, cymbals, and trumpets. When they came to the threshing floor of Kaidon, Uzzah reached out his hand to steady the ark, because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah, and he struck him down because he had put his hand on the ark. So he died there before God. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah, and to this day that place is called Pires Uzzah. David was afraid of God that day, and asked, How can I ever bring the ark of God to me? He did not take the ark to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. The ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house for three months, and the Lord blessed his household and everything he had. 1 Chronicles chapter 14 Now Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, along with cedar logs, stonemasons, and carpenters, to build a palace for him. And David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel, and that his kingdom had been highly exalted for the sake of his people Israel. In Jerusalem, David took more wives, and became the father of more sons and daughters. These are the names of the children born to him there. Shemua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ipa, Elishua, Elpelet, Noga, Nepheg, Jephiah, Elishama, Beliada, and Eliphelet. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, They went up in full force to search for him, but David heard about it and went out to meet them. Now the Philistines had come and raided the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of God, Shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? The Lord answered him, Go, I will deliver them into your hands. So David and his men went up to Baal Perazim, and there he defeated them. He said, As waters break out, God has broken out against my enemies by my hand. So that place was called Baal Perazim. The Philistines had abandoned their gods there, and David gave orders to burn them in the fire. Once more the Philistines raided the valley. So David inquired of God again, and God answered him, Do not go directly after them but circle round them and attack them in front of the poplar trees. As soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the poplar trees, move out to battle, because that will mean God has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistine army. So David did as God commanded him, and they struck down the Philistine army all the way from Gibeon to Giza. So David's fame spread throughout every land, and the Lord made all the nations fear him. James James chapter 1 James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, 
whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all, without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away, even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full-grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first-fruits of all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues, deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world.